Hey everybody, and thanks for watching 3dmotive.com. My name is Cordell Felix, and on this video, I will show you how to create a tileable texture in Photoshop. Using tileable textures is great in games and can also be used in other places like film or any sort of design. I will be using Photoshop CS6 for this quick tip, and this video assumes that you have a basic knowledge of using Photoshop. I already have an image that I want to make into a tileable texture. You can use any image you want, but some images might be a little difficult to make into a tileable texture, so I suggest you use something like dirt, rust, or moss. It's easier to make a texture like this tileable because it has similar shapes all around, it just generally has a lot of noise. The first thing I want to do is make this image into a perfect square. I can do so by cropping the image by pressing the C hotkey, or by clicking this guy right here. You can click and hold to get the perspective crop tool. You can use the crop tool or the perspective, I like the perspective better. So by holding shift and drag clicking, I can snap this texture into a perfect square, and you can drag all the way out and it'll just snap to the bottom of the texture. And then I can hit enter to accept it. Now that it is a perfect square, I want to make the image size into a familiar pixel dimension with a power of two size. I need to go to the image, image size, and change this into something that is closest to the power of two for games. So since it's at 680, it's closest to 512, so I'm gonna change it to 512. And I have constrained proportions on, so it'll change both numbers at the same time. So I hit OK, and there we go. The next step is to run the offset filter on the image to make it tileable. It will not look great at first, but we will get to that soon. Let's go to Filter, Other, then Offset. Since my image is 512, I need this, these two amounts to be exactly half that. Your image does not have to be on the power of 2 scale, but whatever size your image is, these two settings here have to be exactly half in order for this to work. Half of 512 is 256, so I'm going to put that for both values. And you have to have the wraparound on. So now you can see that the texture is kind of cut into four. So I need to be able to clone parts of this texture in these middle parts to make it all work, and then it'll be tileable. I'm going to create a copy of my layer by dragging it to the new copy layer, or just by hitting Control J. This is just in case I need to go back to this other texture here, in case I make any screw-ups on here. The easiest way to make this into a tileable texture is to use the clone brush. The clone brush is right here. If you click and hold down, it'll be the clone stamp. So the way this works is that it samples areas of the texture that you hover on. If you hold Alt, it'll make the brush a little bigger. So if you hold Alt and then click the texture wherever you want, you can paint these same areas over these seams like this. And that is basically how you'll create the tileable texture. Your job is to paint out these seams in the middle here. You do not want these seams in your texture at all. So you need to be able to sample most of the areas and paint out these as best as you can. The edges of this texture are already tileable because we ran the offset filter. So when you are painting over the seams, you want to make sure that you do not touch the edges like this because then you'll just ruin the process and then you'll have to run the offset filter again. and It'll just be recycling over and over. So don't touch the edges. When you want to sample from an area, all you have to do is hold Alt and then wait for that little crosshair icon to pop up. And then you click and then you can draw and it'll sample wherever it is. And you can see that plus sign on the top right, it shows you what areas it's sampling. And also you want to mess with the sharpness of your brush because if your brush is too sharp, it's kind of hard to work with. So if I sample this area and paint here, you can see that I'm getting a very, very sharp edge and it's going to be harder to paint that. So I need something a little softer. So you can do this by holding shift and pressing left or right column. If you press the left column, it'll become a softer brush. And you can see now that if I paint, I get a lot softer edges and it blends easier with the texture. Now that I have my softer brush, I'm going to go ahead and make this into a tileable texture. So I'm going to find areas that I think are going to work best. So I see there's some white, that there's a lot of white here. So I'm going to probably sample some areas from up here. So I can just paint in like this. And there's a lot of dark here, so let's take some dark areas from up here. Maybe turn this into a speckle. I said earlier not to texture your edges, but you can go in kind of close and make sure that your brush isn't really touching the, the actual edge. Let me sample over here. You can do, do it about this close. You can see the radius of my brush that it touches. I'm going to click a couple times and just get rid of that seam. So I didn't completely paint like all the way like that. I just touched the edge barely. I can get away with that. And I can already see that it's already almost gone. So. And you want to try grabbing areas from all over the place. You don't want to keep grabbing the same area and just painting that and painting there. You want to try to keep it a little interesting by breaking it up.
and it's already almost there, so let's take this part. That looks good enough. Now I'm going to make another copy of this by pressing Control J, and then I'm going to run the offset filter on this again, and it'll show me if it's tileable or not. Running this again and painting any visible seams is also good. So I see some weird areas that I didn't really see before, like this. And there's kind of a noticeable seam up here. And that's fine. So I'm going to run the filter one more time. And it kind of brought me back to what I had before. And it looks good. So now we can test this by bringing this into another file, like a file that is twice the size of this, which would be 1024. So I'm going to copy this layer by hitting Control A and then Control Shift C. And then I'm going to go to File, New. And I'm going to make this 1024. And then now I can paste my texture in here with Control V. So if I bring my texture to the top corner like this, and I make a copy of it, I should be able to drag it to this side and there should be no seam at all. I'm going to merge these two together and then create another copy and then drag it down. You can see that it tiles pretty well. If you go up close, you can't really see any visible seams. And it looks pretty good. And you can do this with about any texture you want. It's good for grass, for a very large landscape that you need to tile this texture on. It's also good for blending two textures together using some sort of shader. And it's great for like a metal texture to put on something that you can just render really quick. And that about wraps it up for this quick tip. My name is Cordell Felix, and thanks again for watching 3dmotive.com.